cool. At the right level. This makes me look fat. But I'm really not. See? No, I'm not fat. Not fat at all. Good morning. The poll results are in, and what do y'all want to see? I want to see the One UI camera interface. Same thing as last time, we're gonna go ahead and pull that over. Ah. We're gonna go ahead and hop into the camera app and the first thing we're gonna look at is the front facing camera. Wide angle selfie mode is making a comeback and like before, it works pretty much the same way. Tap this and move it over until it vibrates and then move it over to the other side until that vibrates. The loading yellow circle is a little bit offset, if you'll notice there by the capture button, but I'm sure that's something that they'll fix in the full version. Up there at the top right we have the timer, you can press that and then a little menu nicely flows to the middle of the screen and allows you to choose from 2, 5, or 10 second timers. And in the upper left we try Bixby Vision and, as per usual, it does not work with One UI Beta. Also AR Emoji, we could try that, but... I mean, like, why? I don't think it works in this build anyway. Sliding over to photo mode, we have flash still in that nice flowing animation to the middle. We can turn that on and it still functions correctly, although it stays on the screen for quite a bit before the picture actually gets taken, but it does do the trick. Let's get rid of that. I am liking those animations. We still have the timer for the front-facing camera in photo mode, but just the way they flow to the middle, it's it's quite smooth. I like it. Looks good. Next, we have the beautification button up there at the top right, that magic wand. First, you'll get a live view of the filters until you change filters. This one's my favorite. Love that one. But until you change the filters, then the image goes static, and I'm, I'm, I'd be very surprised if this was how it's supposed to be in the final version. I'm fairly certain they're gonna fix this in later builds. Next you have the beautification. This part, all the sliders in the, the beautification part are way easier to slide than the last version. It was really easy to like tap outside of it and then lose the, like lose your grip on it and then have to open it up again. But you still have the skin tone smoothing, that was the first button, and then the color. I couldn't really tell, like sliding back and forth, what this adjusted. And then you have the face, that's the, the face thinning one. And, I mean, would I use any of these? No, but hey, I mean, we're, we're looking at them. Then you have the eyes, this slider adjusts the size of the eyes, if you want the big anime eyes. One thing that I noticed was new and awesome is the ratio button. You can change the ratios from 4.3 to 16 by 9, which allows you to make a pretty wide-angled selfie if you turn the phone sideways. You also have a 1 by 1 ratio option for Instagram. This is awesome. Next, there's the slightly less applicable but ever impressive full ratio. This is 18.5 by 9, and that occupies from top to bottom, makes your entire screen a viewfinder, and just, it looks pimpin'. Next is the video mode, and what I've noticed immediately is that as soon as you move it onto video mode, it zooms as far in as it's going to, whereas in previous versions, if you press the video record button, it would all of a sudden jump way in and right as it started recording. With this setup, it zooms in as much as it's going to, and then when you press the record button, it doesn't, it stays put. So you already know what the aspect ratio and like how to frame your shot before you press the record button, which I think is nice. Next is selective focus, and the times that I tried it, it didn't actually work. It says, you know, hold it for less than 20 inches. This time, it actually worked. Let's go ahead and check on that in the gallery. And the background blur, it's, it's, it needs some work. Or it could just be because I don't have the latest series of cameras that they have. But either way, this will undoubtedly get better with the S10, but at least we have it. Let's take a look at settings. Right off the bat, you'll see a scene optimizer button that's grayed out only because we're using the front facing camera. If you were to turn it around and use the rear facing one, that would become able to get switched on and off. However, it does it is broken in this build at least because the button that it says it 
outputs onto the preview screen to optimize your shots for the scene is non-existent and it doesn't show up whether that switch is on or off so it's coming it's just not here yet Another thing that I am almost positive was not in the previous version is the ability to hold down the shutter button to create a GIF. This was extremely exciting to me. Instead of a burst shot, you can tell it to create a GIF. You see the numbers climbing up there with different frames, so there's 13 frames in that GIF that I just shot. So if we go here, this is what it will turn in, like turn out looking like. I think this is f badass. Being able to, like, not only now can you get a GIF from any YouTube video or any video period that's showing on your screen, but you can get, you can make your own with the camera. I think this is pimping. You also have the ability to save the pictures taken in pro mode as raw copies and as JPEGs, and to save selfies as they appear in the preview without flipping them. Rear video resolutions are now organized by the ratios. So if you tap the rear video size and then go by 16 by 9 and then tap on the resolution, then you have those resolution options. And with the 18.5 by 9 and the 1 by 1, you don't have those resolution choices, just the ability to change the ratio, at least in this current build. You still do have 60 frames per second, and surprisingly, with 60 frames per second, you have video stabilization still which I thought was impressive and I don't remember having on the previous versions. You also have the ability to record in high efficiency video. Record videos in HEVC format to save space, but it says you may not be able to play HEVC videos on other devices or share them online. And that part's up to you. I did not test to see if HEVC videos were shareable online, but with as much stores as we're having nowadays with the phones, I don't think it's that necessary. By the way, the front-facing camera can still record in 2K video, and if anybody knows if iPhones can do this, please tell me, because I don't think they can, and Apple can go suck a fat one. Hooray, we still have HDR rich tone, and I don't know why it wasn't always apply, but now it is. Video stabilization used to have to be off before tracking autofocus was turned on, but now even when stabilization is off, tracking autofocus is still grayed out. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but I would rather have stabilization than tracking autofocus anyway. Next, that I thought was interesting was camera modes. You can go in and edit those modes, which ones, which ones get shown and the order in which they are shown. This is pretty cool, but I had noticed that super slow mode is not in there at all, so I'm wondering if it's there, if it's going to be there in the finished product, or if they're just like, you know what, nobody uses this sh so why put it in? Check out this awesome sauce. If you tap and hold the capture button, it used to zoom. Now, it creates a temporary floating capture button that you can then return directly down to its, or its origin point when you're done. That's so cool! Now on to the front facing, I mean rear facing camera. Contrary to what I thought it was going to be, that one tree and two tree buttons right there above the photo means that you go from the regular to the zoomed in, just like it was with the Note 8, except it was like, you know, 2X or whatever. It's just a nicer way to graphically represent it. Slow motion works the same way as it used to, and hyperlapse is also making a return. And again, we see that zoom in when we switch from photo to video mode, but when we hit the record button, it stays put. So we can frame our shot perfectly, then hit record, and then everything is hunky-dory. And we don't have to be like, whoa, whoa, it's more zoomed in than I thought it was going to be, blah, blah, blah. Live focus also makes a return, and it works the same way as it did in the previous versions. Let me move this way. Look at her following the camera posing. She's like, okay, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> It didn't work the first time. I don't think, maybe, but the second time it did. Let's check that out. Let me hit blur effect. Let me turn it all the way up. Of course, you know, Phoebe's automatically photogenic, but that is one for Instagram, folks. Love it. Next, we have pro mode. It also makes a return. You can still go through and edit all of the individual parameters. They're all located down at the bottom now, which is nice easily reachable and all that. I like how they have the vertical slider arrangement here. That way you can still... You have a, a larger target to hit as far as the sliders go, and you can still see what changes it makes to the picture itself. Next we have panorama mode. That still works the same way as it always had. You just hit the 
capture button and begin moving slowly from left to right or right to left and then there you go. Food mode is cool, although I mean if you'd like to take a lot of pictures of your food then yeah it'll be quite useful. It has a center of the screen section where it applies focus and then it kind of blurs out the other stuff around it. However, when I tried to photograph Phoebe, she wouldn't stop moving. So I decided to use this Himalayan pink salt instead. The zooming function, because we can't tap and drag on the capture button anymore, we have to use the pinch, and to, the pinch to zoom like before, which I mean isn't that big a deal, but now they have the slider that appears when you start pinching in, uh, pinching to zoom. And <clears throat> it's, it's all right, it's cool. I mean, I, I, I hardly ever zoom in the photos anyway. Maybe that's why they took that function away, just because they probably thought that it's a higher priority to be able to move the capture button than it is to tap and drag on it to zoom a photo, because you know I don't suspect many people do zoom. I mean, they might, I don't know. Again, all this is from the beta build, so it's not the complete finished product yet. But it's it's shaping up rather nicely, yes. Also, I thought that I had about those who I'm sure we'll say, well, look at Samsung copying Apple's camera interface. Is it more like Apple's camera interface than before? Yes. However, at this point, I am okay with them creating interfaces that are more familiar to Apple users to make the transition from those coming from an iPhone over to a Samsung phone less jarring. Because in my experience, when people go from iPhones to Samsung phones, you want to make everything as familiar and as like their old phone as possible on any level you possibly can. Because people have switched before, go from iPhone to Samsung, and then they try it out and they're like, yeah, I tried it for a few days. I, I just I just can't, blah, 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 blah. But it's because they didn't have the, the proper support. They didn't have that familiarity. They didn't have somebody there ready to answer every question to prevent them having questions build up in their head like why is this like this and why can't I change this and where is this setting and why doesn't it have this? If something was there to like tackle all those or if the familiarity was already there to ease the person into the new interface or user or whatever, then the likelihood of them staying with that Samsung phone goes way up. As does the likelihood of me appreciating the Scotties on Patreon, the ones that pay $10 a month, and they are. Stuart Glover, Kyler, William Hunt turned Teddy the dog. Like it. Mario Torres, Spidget, Robert Bitter, Detender Lol, Anthony Jackson, Eric Price, Stephen Nichols, Nick Hawks, Sin O, Unit Omega, and Christopher Caswell. Lisa, I stay with my Scotties. My Scotties are my boys. I ride with them. And I put that on the generation. Next we have the Super Beamers, the ones that pay $5 a month, and those are Paradoxed, and Grant Stockton. And last but certainly not least, we have the Beamers, the ones that pay $1 a month, and they are Josh Udley, Encrypted Bunny, Jamie Ives, Rico the 13th, Roman Van Rukeisen, Nicholas Clark, David Larson, and Alexier. Keep snapping it up and stay beaming. Detect that face. Yes. <coughs> Party tonight. <laughs> okay. Done. Beep, 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 beep. <clears throat> now then. Gonna be. <coughs> mm. <Ooh. laughs> Same thing as last time. We're gonna go ahead and. 